All right, so uh, today's lesson and focus on the front end side is going to be on a technology called jQuery. Okay, has anybody heard of jQuery before today? Cool. It's short for JavaScript query. It is, is probably, yes, you're right. Okay. Short for JavaScript <laughs> query. I'm pretty sure you're right. Um, but yeah, jQuery is. So what, what do you think might be happening when it comes to the fact that if, if it is indeed fact JavaScript query, like what is the query part um, kind of infer to you about what it is? It has a lot to do with selections, right? Selecting things, making queries on a document, for example, like the documents we've been working on, right? Um, so if we can ask um, the DOM, hey, can you, can you give me some information about the various line items you have? You know, hand them all over, right? So we're querying the DOM to get some stuff back. And then we're saying, like, let me just quickly make some changes to it or um, add some things or remove some things, right? Manipulate, traverse, like, hey, let's go talk to your parents kind of situation, right? All of those things are um, things you can do after you have made a query to the DOM, right? So earlier, we uh, last week we talked about um, you know these three large pieces of technology and how they work together on the front end. HTML largely having to do with the content and the the more like structural side of your um, document. The CSS being like the cascading styles that um, inform uh, a user like what they should be seeing, right? And then JavaScript helping to enact behaviors um, and actions uh, based on different events that a user might take when they are interacting with um, a given document, okay? Um, so, and all of those things working together, right? Like we can't use jQuery or JavaScript unless we know about the CSS selectors that are relevant to the HTML elements that we've built. They're all kind of intertwined working together on the front end to give a user um, an experience that we expect to give. Okay, jQuery um, is basically a JavaScript library that was created, um, I don't have the year, but it was created basically out of a need to make um, doing this kind of work simpler, okay? It was at a time where J JavaScript, um, the lines and steps it takes to do some of the work that we wanted to do, um, and I don't know if you felt any of that tension last week, um, trying to like traverse the DOM or like get things and change them. Um, sometimes it takes quite a bit of steps to do that where, um, you know, the people who developed a jQuery was like, why don't we just make it really easy for developers to do this so that we can fast track the things that people are building, um, and give people like a more delightful experience or more useful, accessible, all that stuff, um, without having to like inundate a developer with like all that hefty work to have to deal with. Okay. Um, so jQuery, again, is a library. It lets us find things, change things, observe what's going on, um, keeping an eye on events that are being fired, um, animating things, um, and being able to uh, communicate over HTTP, um, which we'll get into tomorrow in terms of AJAX. Okay? Doesn't CSS do a lot of description that the bigger stuff too, like slide in or like slide out? Like yes. Very basic. CSS indeed does that and that's a lot of you'll see um, camps of folks being like you don't even need JavaScript like there's people that are like you don't even need jQuery right so that there are things that can be done in multiple ways on the front end that um, when you get uh, enough understanding of which one does what um, you can decide you know like you know what a large amount of my user base um, turns JavaScript off on their browsers, actually. So it makes more sense for us to try and use um, CSS implementations of this so that they can get as high of an experience as possible. Or you can get something where, you know, JavaScript, it just does a lot more of the work for more browsers. Um, it's, it's done in a much more elegant way. 
So we're going to do it the JavaScript way, okay? Or alternatively now, like jQuery does things in a particular way for more browsers, um, so we're going to implement it the jQuery way, okay? Or jQuery is another added library that I have to put on my users to load, and that takes up too much performance, so I don't want to do that to my users. I'm not going to use jQuery, okay? Um, or I'm using Bootstrap, and Bootstrap requires jQuery to work, so I have to use jQuery. Okay, so these are all libraries that are either uh, could be dependent um, for you to have to use. And it's important for you to understand the differences that you'll see in JavaScript versus jQuery. But it was all created out of a necessity of like, let's just make things easier and faster. Question? Yeah, for, so for mobile websites, is there like a trend now? Are we moving away from jQuery? So uh, there are a few other um, libraries that are jQuery based, like jQuery UI, and um, I think there's like a jQuery mobile specific um, library that you can utilize. So it really depends, again, um, if, if your mobile like devices are going to like be able to um, withhold the performance levels of like having jQuery libraries. Um, so it really depends on that. But I don't see necessarily people moving, um, moving so fastly away from jQuery that it's not relevant anymore. Um, but one thing that I did notice actually is that jQuery, so this is jQuery's site, their, their um, phrase is write less, do more, right? So it's like do more things with less code, which is great. Um, they have, these things that are going for them, um, they're very lightweight, CSS3 compliant, cross browser, so they you know, deal with all the different browsers and all the different quirks that different browsers bring. Um, they're actually now being managed, they, they, have, they, have a, they had a jQuery foundation that they changed into JS foundation. So I feel like even the jQuery team is like, we understand that JavaScript is now like, gotten better and so we're not in a place where we're as useful um, but JavaScript as a whole needs to be maintained and updated and kept to a high standard so they're continuing to um, be kind of players in that field for larger JavaScript ecosystem um, but if you ever yeah so these are the, the things that I'm kind of talking about in terms of module stuff there's jQuery UI jQuery mobile I don't know what Sizzle is, but it's another library kind of part of jQuery. And then QUnit, which is part of the like testing jQuery stuff. Okay, so um, they've done a lot of work. Um, but yeah, so you see jQuery foundation here. It's actually now JS foundation. Um, so it's just kind of an indicator of like where things are going with, Java, with jQuery. Um, So wherever you go, you're probably going to see jQuery and jQuery is really the only solution for about 10 years. And if you're moving into new things, you might not use jQuery anymore, but there are a lot of things that still talk about jQuery. A lot of library base. So like in Angular, you're able to get search for DOM, and that's still going to be Yeah, so. So it's important to know that they exist. They were, they were the, the way things worked for a very long time. Um, they're still utilized. Um, and if you see something that's like super fancy or super useful, it might be because of jQuery. Okay. Um, so here's one way to look at this. Um, it's like a much more visual way. Um, so when we're utilizing jQuery, you're likely going to see this kind of syntax. So here, this dollar parens something. Um, last week, we were doing document.query selector parens and then the CSS selector in that, um, in that argument. jQuery um, removes you to removes the document.query selector like text to have to write. Instead, you're just saying dollar dot blah, blah, blah. It's like basically an alias for the document. Um, so that jQuery is kind of like taking, um, 
taking precedent and saying like, I know what you're talking about. I'll help you out. Just tell me the methods or the things that you want and then we'll make it happen. Right. Um, so the same way that, that you would utilize um, a larger set of code to do something like this. You're just saying like selectors here and then the action you're trying to take is here dot HTML, blah, blah, blah. So you're, so earlier we had that get the selector and then like change the text to do that. So it was like a few lines of code and more like textually written is now done on one line of code. Okay. Um, and then we also had a, an HTML element. We had to build a function um, called do something, right? And we um, built that into the HTML element on click equals do something. Then we had to create an event handler or, or an event listener, add event listener on this HTML element to do something um, on click, right? Where this is all happening in this space. So we have one, this is the selector, the query selector, right? Hidden box equals banner message. And then the second line of code is basically the, um, the event handler. So we're saying now add event listener to this space on a click event, run this function. And then we're saying run this function on this element dot show. So the assumption here is that this banner message is probably hidden, right? And it, what would, how would you just, how would you set that in CSS if you wanted something to be hidden? What's the CSS property for setting something hidden, for example? Thoughts? Display hidden, yeah, or display none. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so you'll see something that has <laughs> display none. <laughs> so that, so here, and the hashtag means, what does a hashtag in CSS mean? It means that we're looking at an HTML element with an ID of whatever that text is, right? So we have an HTML element with the ID of banner message, okay? The CSS property that's held on that banner message proper it is a property display and the value of none in the CSS. Okay, and then we have here any button in a button container area, okay, um, or within that button container um, element. When it's clicked, do a thing. So, and the thing that's happening is hidden box. We're just saying show it dot show. So instead of me having to say dot CSS, change the property of display from none to showing, all I have to do is dot show. jQuery gives us that methodology to be like dot show. That makes sense. I don't have to do like three or more lines of code. It's more clear to a user or to a developer to be able to say like dot show and know that that's exactly what you want to have happen, right? You don't have to think about the CSS property that I might have used to make that happen. Okay, we'll talk about Ajax tomorrow, so I'm not going to get into that part, but um, jQuery gave us a really easy way to deal with Ajax um, or with like communicating between um, like your client and the server to get like pieces of code. Um, so that I think was a, a really large part of what J jQuery was like really useful besides these like smaller animation type or um, like DOM traversing type um, smaller methods. Instead of me having to write so much out, I can just be like dot show, dot load, dot, you know, dot erase, dot add. Um, okay, so. Um, so is it the same concept <clears throat> that um, where I guess active record was extracting some bunch of stuff from SQL and that's the same idea here with jQuery. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty good, um, that's a good uh, parallel to kind of get the idea um, that jQuery is giving you 
So instead of you having to yeah write so much stuff out in terms of like the larger SQL queries, you're just having to say like dot where or dot all, right? Instead of having to write the whole SQL query out, um, you're able to do some of that work um, in a much simpler way with Active Record. So it's probably better to focus on developing the skills learning all the minutia of HTML and CSS? Yeah. No, so HTML and CSS are going to be the pieces that you manipulate using JavaScript or jQuery, right? So if your HTML and CSS is not um, set up the way that you need it to be to do the work that you want, um, you're still gonna have to do that work with oh, HTML so and CSS. You're, yeah, you're calling it, right? So the yeah, same way same that so the same way that if you make um, um, an active record call on like a really shoddily uh, created uh, database, right? You, you made your database relationships like all messed up or you wrote like the wrong tables and you wrote the wrong attributes and you didn't set everything up the right, the way you wanted to and you're trying to make calls to it and you're like, why is this not working, right? It's because the main database structure uh, is necessary to like make sure that you have on point in order for J or for um, active record to work the way that you want it to right so in the same way on the front end if you want your jQuery and JavaScript to work the way you want it to you have to have already given some like clear instruction for how your HTML should be structured and how your CSS is laid out um, so that you can make the appropriate queries on the DOM, okay? Um, obviously, it's easier to just like erase and, and put back some HTML elements um, on a document than like having to rebuild a database, um, but that's a really good parallel to, to make, okay? Um, so I had already kind of mentioned like get element by ID. That was like one of the ways that we can call something by its ID. Whereas now you can just say dollar parens, the thing I need, right? Selector I need, and then get that result back using jQuery. You can also call something like dot children or dot parents um, and get that information. Again, this might feel like, oh, well, we were able to do that last week, and that's because JavaScript's gotten better. Because of the work that jQuery did, JavaScript's gotten better. So it might not feel as stressful as it had been back in the day when, J when JavaScript had none of these like more quick um, uh, solutions. And that's because jQuery was like, let's do it better. And then JavaScript was like, you're right, that was a good idea. <laughs> okay. Um, so again, another picture of the DOM. And then this is how you use jQuery, okay? So step number one, as you would probably guess, the same thing with Bootstrap you're going to link to the library. And where do links go in, um, in the head of the HTML document, okay? Um, so in order for us to use jQuery, we have to set a link element at the head of our HTML documents, okay? And that's for every page if we build a whole like set of pages. Um, alternatively, we'll see um, as we progress into like Rails and React, there's um, ways that we would be able to say like, almost like require relative in all the pages that we create, we can go to this place and these are the libraries we're gonna use. Okay. Um, so sorry, but you have, you have to indicate the specific library that you want. Yes, yeah. well, so yeah, so you'll be able to, um, so there's two ways to link to this information, right? One, just like we had with Bootstrap, you can download um, like a minified actual document, JavaScript document for jQuery, and you can let it sit in your folder um, of your repository, okay? Or you can use the CDN. Does everybody remember what CDN stands for? Anyone? Pop quiz, I am full of pop quiz today. CDN, CDN means content delivery network, okay? So it's like, we know you need this stuff to work, so we're just gonna let it sit up here in the cloud so that anybody can access it at any time, okay? And our job is, as a CDN, is to um, be distributed and to be on at all times, right? So instead of you having to like make sure that your 
library is up to date and on at all times, it, you can point to like, I can't, I can't, you know, take that responsibility on. Okay, I'll just point to this CDN that I know is always going to be on and popping and latest. Okay, so that's a CDN. So you're basically saying like, you can get the jQuery library from here. Okay, so you're linking to a public place that that lives. Okay, there are a lot of different CDNs. Um, so that's what you're seeing here. The source is actually jquery.com and then this version. Um, I don't recall if this is the latest version, but you will, if you use a CDN, get like, you can go to their page and get the latest version to link to your, um, on your document, okay? Um, and again, when we wanna use jQuery, um, we're basically using an alias for jQuery using the dollar sign, okay? So, So if I took all this information here to our information we have over here, I'm just gonna throw it at the bottom real quick and see what we need. So we have our script here that I'm gonna throw to the top. Okay, and then we have one actual thing going on. So one, one thing you'll see very commonly is this document.ready. Okay, so earlier we were talking about um, at some point you'll learn why you would have a script at the bottom of the page, right? We talked about that a little bit. So just to refresh your memory, um, when you have JavaScript that's being loaded, right? Some of the stuff that you're doing in JavaScript have to do with elements on the page, right? Elements in the document. So if the document's not already loaded, it might fire off or do things. Um, if you read the JavaScript document, um, it'll try and do stuff. If you put it like at the top, right? You're reading it top down. It'll try and do things to the document when the document is not already finished being read. So it's as if, so the changes that you expect to see um, happen before the user sees it. So the, the bad thing about that is that you want the, you wanna make sure that all the HTML elements that you need to have on the screen are like on the screen and ready to go before you're trying to do stuff on top of that, right? So document.ready says, okay, I am going to wait for this document to have been loaded onto the window before I run any of these functions. So you'll see this very often in, in jQuery. You'll have $document.ready, and then all of your actual code would end up inside this function. So you would see it like look like that. But this is a second head. Well, I'm removing this head. I just copied and pasted it. So I'm, I'm, what I wanted to, before I removed all this content is to review this line of code here, specifically, uh, specifically jQuery. I've seen that a lot, but I'm wondering if you, if you put your, your script link at the bottom of the page, uh, at the bottom of your body, including that a link to your own uh, script out. Um, good question. So you wouldn't because if you are, so right here in this example that I had here, this is all JavaScript and this is an embedded JavaScript, right? This is an embedded, this is a JavaScript HTML or script HTML element, right? And within that, there's all this JavaScript, okay? So this script tag would be something you would typically put at the bottom of your page. If you wanted to embed JavaScript, if you wanted to like do JavaScript function functionality in your HTML page, you would put it at the bottom of the page, right? Because you wanna make sure again that your document is fully loaded before you're trying to run all of these JavaScripts. 
good question. It will still be in the body, but it would be at the bottom of the body, like all the way, all the way at the bottom. So like it should be the last thing you see before body, the end body tag, usually, right? Um, and because your script is going to be on another page, like this, this information, which is actually a good point now. Um, so we'll take this information, okay? And we put it in a JavaScript file. Okay, so let's touch um, application.js. Okay. Or no. Okay. So, so we have application.js, right? So this is going to be something that you linked at the top. Okay, so you're linking, linking it, uh, Okay, I'll remove this. Once it's not, you... Oh, I'm asking, like, why, why, what's the point of linking it at the top? I'm not seeing, like, you know, like, a debate, like, people now have to link at the bottom. So, link at the top is just, in the head is just where a lot of, like, your references are going to be made. Mm -hmm. So, the argument to this is that like, this is where I'm saying where my, my CSS is. So it's, it's logical to have all of the, these are the places that you should get all the stuff I need at the head at the top, right? Um, if you have actual JavaScript running in your file, in your HTML file, you would put it at the bottom because you know that the document needs to load fully. But linking another JavaScript page, right, just like you would a CSS document, you put it at the top, but this is the first thing that gets read. So it's basically saying like, I'm here and I'll be ready whenever you're ready. So go ahead and read the rest of the stuff and then apply these things, like run these functions after the document is ready. So the document basically has a status that the DOM object has a status that's like, you know, ready or not ready or loaded or not loaded. And it'll wait for that to come back as, as true before these things are run. So because it's here, so right, if, if this gets run, it's going to say here, it's going to read this, read this, read this. It's going to go out and get the JavaScript, uh, the jQuery library, okay? Then it's gonna get here, it's gonna go out, get this, it's gonna read this first line, and it's going to wait for the document to be ready. At this point, it is not ready, right? So then it'll go back, it'll move forward. It's like, okay, um, now I'm gonna set the body up, now I'm gonna create this, now I'm gonna create this. Now, here, it's gonna stay empty, right? It's going to go down here. It's going to set, it's going to be here. It's going to look at this information. It will go down to the JavaScript. It will set this up. Okay. It'll sit there and wait. That's why this, um, this stuff will sit here and then it'll keep going. It'll set up the ULs. It'll set up this const, this um, script has begun. Okay. It will create this, select this element at this point. That's already been loaded. So it's okay because, again, it's at the bottom of the document. It will then add hello world to the page. And then it'll, again, it'll wait for this function to work. It'll do this and it'll wait for all this stuff. And then it'll set this up and it'll set all this stuff up. Okay. That was from the other one. So I'll, I'll add that in a second. Okay. And again, if I have two H1s in the same area, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad, right? Because 
headings are numbered based on the section that it's in or like the the general like area it's in it should be contextually relevant to that section so there should not be more than one h1 especially not after h2 so here i'm going to put an h3 okay so our application js is going to wait for all that stuff to happen before it runs any of this other stuff okay and what do you think this line of code is going to do so this is a jquery line of code change so it's going to select select what say how many how many things do you think we'll get back one h1 yeah, yeah anything that has an h1 right so i'm actually going to change this to h3 because we don't want to change the h1 okay and then dot text so we're saying replace the text with high here right oops Leave it. Okay. So where is it? So we referenced it here, and we have this here. So you don't have to call it in the body, like when you're ready. I think so at the end, the body of the No, we don't. So here we're saying, like, when the document is ready, select an H3 and set text to high. So as soon as it's done, you need the entire document. It should do this, yeah. Interesting. So let's see we, if we can select it and do it ourselves, right? So we have H3. So we can ask for the H3. So the console is a really good place for you to be able to do this stuff as well, like to like mess with jQuery. So here we selected the H3. Let's see, what is the text? <coughs> Use that. Okay. So if we were doing it the other way, uh, H3 text dot live. So changed it here. But why didn't it change it over here? Let's try that. There, it worked. Okay, so this needs to be in a script tag. But so similar, I guess it's similar to a link, but not. So when we use link for CSS, we use that, right? Uh, CSS. So referring to this styling here. Is this, is this going to change anything on our page? Another quiz, pop quiz. So this is just a general style.css page or a CSS document that we have linked to our HTML. But none of the classes or IDs are called in our HTML document. So this will not affect our actual HTML, right? Because 
none of these things are living on our current HTML document. We have no, we have no paragraph elements, right? We have no classes named call to action, and we have no IDs named hot dog. Make sense? Okay, so um, what are some of the other things we can do with jQuery? So technically, yeah, you can give every single element. Yeah, you can start with that, right? You can start saying like, okay, the first thing I know I want to change is this like this one title. So I'm going to name this title like the thing I want to change, ID, right? And then you can make changes to that one ID named the thing I want to change, right? If you start realizing like I'm using this, this header like multiple times, or I want it to happen anywhere on any page of my website, I don't want to set an ID everywhere, right? Maybe I, I, those are always called H1s, or those are always the, um, the first child of my you know, summary section, okay? So then you want to think about how can I replicate this code so I don't have to keep writing it over and over and over. You realize there's a, start, there's a larger pattern that you're creating with your styles, as it should happen, right? Unless it's, even with like alerts or danger, right? You can have alerts and danger happening multiple in multiple spaces on your larger site. So then it's like every time I every time it, this happens, no matter where it is on my site, I want it to perform in this way. Um, so that's how you would end up um, refactoring and building on your uh, decisions that you make. But for sure, the first thing you you want to do is just like make a thing and make sure that it works the way you want. Put an ID on it first. That's totally fine. Or like, you know, change, change the entire elements. Like, you know, I, I want all my H1s to do this thing, right? Or all the buttons to do this thing. And then you can scope down, like not all the buttons, only these buttons that have this particular selector status. Cool. Um, so I talked a little bit about document.ready. Um, that's how document already works. It's gonna wait until the document is fully loaded to run all the stuff that needs to happen or wait for all the things, um, wait for the events to happen. Okay. Um, I'm gonna leave you all to do this after we have this um, conversation, but it's a, I'll show it to you, it's a, Code structure challenge focused on pizza. So hopefully you're a little hungry a little bit. Maybe this will help you for lunch. <laughs> um, but you're gonna practice basically using different jQuery methods um, to do things with, um, with the page that you set up here. Um, you're gonna use two files, um, none of which are set up for you. So you have to build, you have to create two pages and then use the console to like interact with those um, those files. Okay, um, so you'll be doing that in a moment or in a little bit. Um, the other thing I should mention is this. How many of us have seen this keyword in JavaScript? Not the button, like the, the term this. It's my favorite and it's everyone's favorite. So um, does anybody recall the concept of self when we were playing with Ruby and you were like, what? What is self, right? So a similar construct in JavaScript is the keyword this, okay? So the keyword this, um, ruins your day by like every time you say this from this uh, from now on you're gonna think about this and not just this but this this 
keyword this. Um, but basically, this the keyword is a way to refer to um, an object that you are working on within the con like within the context of um, the function you're writing. So, like once you go inside a block of code, the object you were working on with that block of code is now called this instead of the object it was named before. Does that make some sense? So here, this is an example. So this HTML, uh, I'll make this a little larger for y'all to be able to see. Okay, so the HTML contains, so on the HTML side, not shown here, right? We have a button, a bunch of button elements, okay? So here, we're saying on when the document is ready, do some stuff. Right? And then this next line, we're saying for every button on click, do a thing. Right? So whenever any button on my HTML document is clicked, run this function. And then for that function, we're saying button dot remove. Right? What do you think is happening when I do this? everything with the label button will be removed, right? But that doesn't make sense, right? If I click a button, should all the buttons be removed at that point? No, that one button should be removed, right? So this allows us to refer to the thing that we are working on within the context, uh, like so within the context of the button that was pushed, okay? So in this context, button in here, this is the button that was pushed. Not all the buttons, this button. So in the, in the first block of code, that is all the buttons. Exactly. Okay, so, all right. And then here, just, that one. just the one button, okay. this button. Not all the buttons, just this button, okay? So whenever you think like, what? What is this? Like, why is it referring to this? Now, when I move to my next line of code or my next function, I might also refer to this, right? So I, maybe I'll say like, all, when, when somebody hovers over any title, this title dot color purple, right? When I'm referring to this in that function, I'm referring to this title that was hovered over, okay? Same word, different context, okay? And mostly it's referring to the object that triggered the event. That's a good way to think about it in terms of this case. Um, the object that triggered this event, and that's, that's something's happening to it, you're referring to this object, this thing. Not all the things, just this thing. Okay, for it, it will sound clear now, then it will get confusing, then it'll have clarity, then it'll get confusing, and you'll say this the whole time you're trying to ask a question and you'll feel really embarrassed. <laughs> but that is how this works. Okay, um, if you ever need to Google it, because it's like the hardest thing to Google, because how do you Google a regular English word like this? Um, you would use this keyword JavaScript. So. Keyword this JavaScript even I would put okay. So if you ever need to like do some extra searching, okay. Uh, and then here the DOM traversal comes much becomes much easier using this, like the this keyword, okay. And then alter and then after that we have these two um, this other pizza traversing challenge. So we'll just leave these two. You have these two challenges about pizza. Um, aptly done right before or after lunch, however quickly you want to get started on this, um, meaning this work, not this keyword. Um, does anybody have any other questions about jQuery? I went like really lightly on, on all the things you can do with it, um, but I did show you the most important part, documentation. You can find it here, okay? Um, if you ever want to have a better understanding of um, 
why uh, people would or would not use jQuery. Somebody made this really cool website called You Might Not Need jQuery. Okay, it really just shows you, sure, you, jQuery is awesome, but sometimes you don't need it. The cool thing about it to me is that it shows you like, this is jQuery, this is JavaScript. Like, that's a lot of work, right? Okay, so some of this stuff like, I'll just use fade in instead of all this stuff. Okay, so sometimes jQuery is like super awesome. Sometimes those are both pretty to me equal, right? Like maybe use it, maybe not. But some pieces it's you've already seen. Like again with show, like it's much easier to understand that I'm doing, I'm showing something than reading this style dot display equals blank, right? It's much easier to say like show this thing. It's much more readable. Okay, so there's some reasons why somebody would use um, jQuery. Um, it's really useful to see like what it's replacing for you. Okay, um, alternatively, there's a site like you might not need JavaScript, and it shows you all the the, the CSS stuff you can do that that people usually um, look to for JavaScript to do that you can do in, in CSS. So again, know all the tools that are available know what they do so that you can make the right decisions for you in that moment what you should use and when okay any last questions about jquery that i can answer for you so far cool we just get all up into the pizza now with our traversing challenges <laughs> somebody said pizza um last last cohort when i was teaching this i learned that you can use um emoji to to do lots of kind of stuff like I'll just leave that there. This is really fun.